dear kidnapper. At first, I hated you. I detested you. You invaded my life unexpectedly and following a tedious, well premeditated plan, you deprived me of something that no human should lack. The freedom of movement and action. You, who, as a nurse, were supposed to be my support while my illness made me vulnerable. You profited from my defenselessness and made me your hostage. Your possession. You rendered my body motionless and sunk my mind into a deep state of unconsciousness. All with a single carefully chosen pill. From that moment on, only the help of one or a few accomplices prevented you from taking me away from the hospital bed. And since I woke up a few hours later, tied to an old chair in the attic of the house, maybe yours, with a ruffled handkerchief clogged down my mouth, I suppose you found the support needed to transport You were keeping me in a very limiting and uncomfortable position. I didn't care that it made me suffer. You didn't bat an eye in response to my desperate pain-induced moans, nor my self-harming attempts to escape the tight constraint of the ropes. <sighs> I lost count on how many times I sobbed in the eerie silence loud enough for you to hear from the house. But that was not your concern. You were immune to the image of my tears falling down my cheeks and trickling on my chin. You, you were made of rock. I condemned you in my mind countless times for your ruthlessness, your selfishness, your lack of humanity. You left me with nothing but the howling of wolves in the distance. The delicate rays of the moon falling through the window, the constant feeling of numbness through my whole body in that continuous, ardent longing for a glass of fresh water. I didn't know why you did it on the first day. We didn't know each other, and as far as I knew, I, I didn't have any enemies. Any unfinished business with edgy individuals. I couldn't figure out what qualified me as a good victim of this kidnapping game. It couldn't be random. You had many patients. It finally dawned on me when you made me a visit in the attic, equipped with a big needle linked by a transparent plastic tube to a blood bag. You needed me for my blood. You were stealing it directly from my veins because you found out how valuable it was. It has been enough for you to see on my medical file that I had HR null blood, the rarest and most cherished type. Give up on your human side if you have one, and to exploit me for the very essence of my body. I know my medical condition wasn't preventing me from having blood that was proper for donation, but as a human being, I should have been given the opportunity to choose whether and how I donated it. You didn't seem to be in touch with the very basic principles of ethics and morality, though, so there I was, standing in the dark, valuing no more than an object, a reservoir of antigen-free blood. You were collecting it too often draining slowly my life out of me. The scarcely diversified meals that you were offering me with the blade of a knife stuck to my throat so I don't make a sound were not enough for my body to be able to recover from the loss of blood. I was feeling my anemic organism gradually being emptied of energy and vigor. I was dying, slowly but surely. I have to admit, 
I wasn't expecting you to be so cautious while doing the venipuncture. You know that it was in your interest to have clean, uninfected blood to sell on the black market. However, at some point, I started to believe that it wasn't only that interest, that you were so meticulous. When you were wiping with rubbing alcohol the area that was about to be punctured, it um, felt almost like a fondling, like for the first time, you were caring for me. I was in pain for you, and your tender manner of operation showed me that somewhere, deep into your cold stone heart, you were grateful. It felt so good to have human interaction again after such a long time. You were no longer just a soulless vampire sucking me dry and leaving me stranded to agonize. You were giving me the chance to regain something that I thought I'd never find again in a short time that was left for me. A companion. A friend. In the end, it wasn't the fact that I was tied to a chair that was the hardest for me to endure, but the frightening loneliness I bore every day and night. I lost my ability to perceive time, buried in a silence that was only ever broken by my inner voice. And by you. The sound of your slow-paced steps on the staircase that led to the attic were my favorite part of the day. Sometimes I would hear them in my head and refuse to accept that I only hallucinate. As the weeks passed, I was getting more and more delusional while waiting impatiently for our next meeting. With some effort, I have to admit, I managed to understand that some dreadful horrors must have pushed you to your limits and forced you to kidnap me. Who knew how many helpless people relied on the money exchanged for my blood, not to starve to death? Who knew what expense treatment made the difference between the survival and the death of a beloved one of yours? I wasn't seeing you as a, a detestable individual anymore, but rather like someone who was very challenged by the torments of life, obligated to resort to some undignifying schemes and actions. <laughs> Dear kidnapper, at first I hated you, but then I started to feel affection for you and eventually fell in love with you. I loved the way your curly hazel hair shone in the morning sun rays when we were having breakfast together. I loved the glances that you were giving me while you were feeding me, and the refreshing image of your smile when I would spill food on my shirt. <laughs> the pressure of the knife blade on my neck was weaker with every meal. You were starting to trust that I won't cry for help. I even addressed you some words a few times. And you would look amused and delighted about our conversation. I was having difficulty speaking, for my jaw almost blocked in an open position from the gag that I had in my mouth most of the time. <laughs> it's too bad I can't recall any of the phrases we exchanged. It was only us. And who cared about the surroundings? Who cares that my arms and legs were firmly tightened on the old splintered wooden chair? I didn't even care that I was dying anymore. Was finally feeling accomplished. My mind was finally been made liberated from every constraint that my former rather decadent lifestyle has brought me. The strong grip of the ropes that you knotted around me has paradoxically set me free. Our love was blooming in defiance of this apparently displeasing environment. Actually, seeing how delightful we were feeling in the old attic, having only each other, 
I started to question the unwritten rules that most of the people blindly follow. No one was entitled to tell me that the vibrant shade of emerald green that the grass has under the glistening light of a cloudless afternoon is more appealing than the kaleidoscope mosaic of olive and blue and black shades that reflected from the mold that flourished on the plan for the hour Nor did anyone have the right to see me as more unfortunate than some individual wandering unrestrained along the alleys of Central Park. I was happy, independently of how others would see my situation. <sighs> Dear kidnapper, at first I hated you, and then I loved you. And afterwards, you betrayed me. <laughs> One evening, I was delighted to hear your steps break the silence on the floor below the attic as usual. And this time, however, you were not on your own. You were not humming a random song that you had heard on the radio during the day like you always do. Instead, you were talking to someone, um, uh, a man, <laughs> another man. <laughs> you both seem to be enjoying yourselves very much. For the first time, I heard your delicate laugh, and it wasn't me who triggered it. <laughs> What I heard afterwards only confirmed to me how close you really were to each other. Needless to say, every feeling that I caught for you during all this time collapsed into a deep hollow of sorrow. I was heartbroken. I have always tried to find an explanation for the way you acted, to find you an excuse for every horror that you committed. drained of energy and power, slipping closer and closer to death with every day that passed. I had no choice but to love you or to agonize. Ironically, loving you proved to be the thing that made me agonize the most. I could have stayed and be your hostage until the last drop of life dripped out of my veins. But to accept your betrayal? That would be too much to ask. While you enjoy the presence of your new lover, I profit from your distraction. You surely don't offer me attention anymore. And I write you these words. I already escaped from the grip of the ropes. I could have done it long before because, after losing so much weight, I was no longer trapped, just loosely tied. Before, I have chosen to stay for you. But now I have no reason to do it anymore. I will jump the window to land on your roof and find my way to the ground. I will no longer be free in your chains, but a captive in the outside world. Dear kidnapper, first, I hated you, and then fell in love with you. But you betrayed me, so now I'm leaving.